Thank you, Ant. Um, poor Michelangelo, we're dragging his name low. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm Matias Ventura. I'm a developer and designer at Automatic, and I started working on Calypso, the Calypso team, when the project began. So my talk is called A Look into Calypso. Uh, so for those that don't know, Calypso is a project, a JavaScript project that Automatic launched about eight months ago. Um, but before I dive into that, I just want to take a bit of a look into the whys behind uh, this project. So, and I think this is important because WordPress is uh, bigger than ever. Its, its robustness has been proven for more than a decade. Um, so what's, what's the deal with JavaScript in the WordPress world? Um, and this was one of our biggest, like, um, the biggest problem we had when we started working on Calypso was we wanted to have an, an interface for managing your WordPress sites that allow you to manage all your sites together that incorporated elements of real time and reactivity uh, that got rid of sort of the page reload paradigm that WP Admin has. And all of these ingredients together makes it really awkward to, to work within the constraints of WP Admin. So that was kind of the background for why we, why we wanted to do something completely separate. The other aspect is, as Matt said before, that speed is a feature. And this is getting more and more relevant as more web applications start to evolve and people get familiar to that and accustomed to that perception of speed. And more importantly, the perception of speed is sometimes as valuable as speed itself. And what I mean by perception of speed is that whenever you're interacting with the data of your site, people have this expectation of having a real-time feedback from what they are doing. They want to feel that they are manipulating the real data and not just sending instructions along the network and waiting for a page reload to happen. So this is a, a video of what Calypso looks. And this is, a, the, this is a concept of a single page application. It has no boundaries in terms of uh, reloading things. Um, you can see that interactions are fluid. Uh, there's no delay in going from one section to another. So to recap, we have a single page application written entirely in JavaScript. And it's driven by the WordPress.com REST API. There's a bit of WP API now that it's been incorporated into WP.com. Um, and this, this last point is important, why it's driven by the API. Because this, this is the, um, the main element why we can keep the connection between a project as big as WordPress, as sturdy and robust and as WordPress is, and incorporate all these new technologies that allows us to do more real-time feedback for the user. This separation of the API and the client is what allows us to sort of disrupt what the UX of WordPress means without really letting go of what WordPress remains to be. Because at the, at the end, uh, Calypso is still powered by the same WordPress that everyone uses. And the last aspect is, which I think is really, is really nice that we were able to do this, is that this is a quote by Matt when we launched Calypso. So a lot of people thought we should keep this proprietary, but throughout my life, I learned that the more you give away, the more you get back. Um, I think this is, I, don't know, I feel like there's an intangible sense with WordPress of everyone feeling that it's their home, it's their place in the web, it's what they have control and complete ownership of. And I think this, this freedom and this uh, behind it all of obviously the, the nature of open source, but this sense of owning what you're creating and knowing that in the years to come, you will still be able to take that whatever you need to go if things change. And we wanted to have that for Calypso as well. If Calypso becomes a better or different or modern way to, to manage all your sites, we wanted you to have the same kind of freedoms. Uh, so you can download Calypso, you can modify it, make it your own. You can run it locally from local host, and you don't need to run uh, from like WordPress.com at all. Um, so this is the uh, Calypso in GitHub. Um, you can 
take a look at it there. We actually deploy, we actually queue to deploy to WordPress.com from this repository. So whenever there's a merge into the repository, we queue a deploy that eventually gets to production. So I just want to go over a few of the challenges that developing this uh, project meant. And the, the main one is that there's really, when you start working on a single page application, that again, it's meant to replace all of WP Admin's functionality plus extra functionality like managing all your sites and all this reactivity stuff. So, and you end up with a lot of state and a lot of application state that you need to manage in a single session. That's quite complex to wrangle and it's very easy to end up, especially in a project with many developers, it's very easy for it to end up really in a really convoluted mess. And that's where React comes in to help solve that problem. So React is a project by, by Facebook. It's a JavaScript library. And what it does, it's basically a declarative view written in pure JavaScript that simplifies the process of building complex UIs. So what does this mean? The main thing is that uh, it really removes a lot of the complexity from what you need to do to put in the browser the representation of truth that your application needs. So the way, if we think of the, what the browser is showing the user as just a reflection of some truth that lives elsewhere, React is in the middle of that. It's managing what the DOM should be reflecting. And so it, it really helps developers in thinking in, in a more declarative way where this truth goes one way. So if you modify the source of truth, React can tell what sort of nodes in the DOM it needs to update to reflect that truth. So this, again, this is removing a lot of the complexity for developers in dealing with such a big application. I want to just go a bit about some misconceptions with uh, what React in Calypso is. Um, the first one is that React is not really a framework. Um, it's more like a library. And, and this is important because when, when we started with Calypso, we didn't want to uh, we, we tried a few frameworks, we tried different things, uh, but we wanted to stick as much as possible with pure JavaScript and, and have a very modular approach to how we code the interface. And React is just that. It's one tool among many with which we, we can build this application. And by many, I mean we have things like WPCOMJS for the API. We use SAS. Uh, there's also Redux. There's page.js for the routing and many other tools and ideas. This takes me back to some of the, another thing that I want to highlight, which are the development values of the project, um, which has driven sort of like why we chose React and why we chose all these different utilities. The first one is that we do it all for the user. And this is, again, at the heart of where I started with the perception of speed and the sort of interfaces that users expect in modern web applications. So all of these matters if it improves the user experience. The other one is that we optimize for iterating quickly. And this is a more uh, developer-centric uh, problem because there's, there's always this proclivity to over-abstract things or make generic tools out of it. And this is a, an important tenant in Calypso is that we, try, we know that abstractions always become burdens of knowledge, so we are very careful about the ones we adopt. We are here for the long haul. This means that we want to be able to shift pieces of the application as things evolve or as new solutions appear or as we discover new problems. There's an interesting article we have in the documentation of Calypso, which is called Our Approach to Data. Uh, because that has fluctuated since we started Calypso at least three times. Um, and I think it's, a, it, it's kind of like a recount, a historical recount of why all those changes, and always with the same premise at hand. Again, thinking back about the React thing, we wanted to have a unidirectional data flow where you just modify truth in one place and that just cascades down to the whole application. But the way you implement that is something that's been in the last few years has been rapidly having different solutions from the JavaScript community. The other one is that we don't trust ourselves to be perfect. Um, and this goes with the, the GitHub repository and the culture of code reviews that we implemented for this project. 
um, which has been immensely helpful. Um, just sharing all this work, all the burden of looking at what's going on. And, and it comes down to the final tenant, that is that we are in it together. Um, our idea is that no one really owns the code or lines of code, like ideally everyone owns the code. And it really happens in many modules where you see like, I don't know, 20, 30 contributors. It's really hard to say who wrote what. It just becomes part of the whole team. And this is, this, I think this has a very a direct impact in the UX because users don't really care about any team boundaries or any sort of like division that you do internally. They experience the application as a single entity. So I think that when developers and designers care about all these flows together as a unity, the application just becomes so much better. So I want to touch a few points, interesting points that came with uh, in the or like the last year of Calypso. One is code splitting, uh, and what is code splitting? So we were talking about a single page application, right? Which means we have virtually all of WP admin loaded at once in a single session. That's a lot of code, a lot of JavaScript code. So this build ends up being quite huge. So you need to break it down and start creating chunks of code that you can load on demand when you need them. So this is a screenshot when you run Calypso on the terminal. Those are the chunks that get generated, which are quite a few. So just a little impasse. Now we are in a moment where, OK, we said we wanted a single page application, but now this fancy single page application needs to break all its code into separate sections sort of like what the browser does when you click a page and it needs to wait to load that another page. Well, it's, there's a crucial difference here in that this code chunks, this notion of sections, is something that's embedded into the knowledge of the application. What does this mean? Is, this means that this is an internal feature of the application that the application knows when or what a section does and when it can load it. This opens up the opportunity for doing many different optimizations like smart preloading. Smart preloading, we, we have this in Calypso now, which is we can do things like if you hover over a section, we know what that section is going to require, so we can preload that chunk of code, and that will make the transition instant when the user clicks. These chunks are like we're talking about like between 20 kilobytes to 500 kilobytes uncompressed. So it's quite fast. So this is the video. If you hover like blog posts, you see the network request. It's already loaded. If you go to themes, it loads another one for themes. So when you click on the actual thing, it loads instantly. The images are coming later, of course. Um, so there's also another interesting uh, utility we are creating, because this applies to general sections. But we also sometimes want to preload things within the actual interface. And this is quite crucial for something like the editor, which is using pieces from all over the place. Like it has an author selector where you can change the author. Uh, it's using categories. So there's a lot of, again, it's very hard to consider that as a single entity because it becomes huge. Um, so this thing is something that we're exploring. It's not yet merged, so you can check it out there. It's a way to create a React component that will be in charge of loading after the initial render whatever else you put inside that component. Uh, so you can do things like wrap the sidebar of the editor in this component, and the first thing you will get is the editor, so the writing space, and then as soon as that page loads, it will load on demand the sidebar. The other aspect is uh, components, which is a really big piece that React brings, brings into the application. So I think this is appropriate now, since we are here just a few hundred meters away from this painting by Bruegel from the Babel Tower. Uh, if you have some time, go visit that museum. It's really great. So I think that building complex applications sometimes feels like this, especially as you start to lose a sense of shared language like you don't really, it's, things just become completely unmanageable. And I think components give that sense of shared language to developers and designers alike. So what is a component? A component is 
basically it's just a React entity that renders HTML. It may or may not have an action queue or functionality, and then some SAS code for the visual aspects. All of this is packaged into a single entity. We have hundreds of these entities right now in Calypso. And you sort of build with it like Lego pieces. We have a live gallery where you can browse the ones that exist. And developers are all the time creating new ones and refining old ones. So you can really piece together a new page just by using all existing functionality, which assures that you will get consistent design, consistent UX, and you get more developers working on the same thing because they need it for their own use, so you also advance them in terms of quality. Com this is an example of composition of how that single site component is used in many places at once. So every time this component is improved, and this is already an old screenshot, there are improvements that already happened to this one, and they are applied across the whole application. So this is, a, I think it's an interesting idea that is start, I think we started to identify this quite later on in the process, is that this component sort of define an application level semantic. So we have the old HTML tags that we all know, and now we also have this like, super set of tags that embed a lot of functionality, but can use in the same way. So when you write your component and you're writing your HTML, you intermingle HTML with these other notions. And we have many of those. Like teams are constantly creating new ones. So you have things like a site, like a post, like a comment stream or draft list. And all of these you can reuse. It also allows you to transcend the specific medium of the web, because this is a language that you can use with the team if you're working on a mobile application as well that may be using other technologies. This is a common language that you can use to represent the designs that you're creating. So one final aspect of this is using Calypso as a framework. So before, I said that Calypso used many different tools uh, to sort of assemble the the whole application. And th this was important because we didn't want to be constrained by a specific framework. And I think it's sort of related to how WordPress itself always used pure PHP and not just some template language or whatever, or framework. So the thing about Calypso is that it itself becomes the framework. So these are all, uh, again, higher order ideas that Calypso creates from those basic tools. And these are things that are useful outside of the domain of the WordPress.com application. Things like preloading that I just show, internationalization solutions, uh, UI components, the application components, etc. So another aspect of why I think using Calypso as a framework is promising is because the way it works is that you can run Calypso just by like, downloading it and clicking a file like, and open it in the browser. You need to make a build of Calypso. And this process of making the build allows you to, like, in itself, what it does is it also gets rid of anything that you're not using. So if you download Calypso and you see all these modules that you don't care about, like, I don't know, like the reader, the WordPress.com reader or other modules, you just disable them and then when you run your build, you would get only what you need. And we have different ways of disabling this. One is just with a features object in a configuration file that you can just toggle them, and that will get rid of, the, of those modules in the final build. And another one is the notion of a project. Um, so WPCOM right now is a project that's in the, in the GitHub repository, but you can replace that just with a config file and say, project, my project, and you will, you will take over Calypso and just define your own sections. One last aspect of this is customization of how Calypso looks. Uh, so if people think that Calypso is too blue, uh, it's possible to change the color just by manipulating the SAS variables. And this is possible because we have all the components are consuming from the same global variables. Um, so it's very easy to change the, how it looks. With one caveat, like I had to make a few changes to the way we were rendering the cyber to make this, just to make these screenshots, uh, but it's now merged into Calypso, so it's possible to do this. Um, and it's just really just changing a few variables, and you have the control for that. 
So if you download and you don't like the blue, you can change it. Um, so to finalize, if I mean, it, this is fairly new. We don't really know where this is going, how this can be useful to other people, in which ways. Uh, but I think there are very promising directions. Even within Automatic, we're using Calypso for other projects that have nothing to do with WordPress.com um, because it's very flexible, and there are many tools that we have figured out through these years like around preloading and hopefully soon like offline support uh, that I think are really valuable to other people as well. So I say just if you have some time, install Calypso locally and give it a go. See if it fits to build some kind of project and let us know how it works. Um, ideally, we would want at some point to completely switch to WP API. It'd be nice to even have a JavaScript utility as a wrapper for WP API uh, that we can just swap uh, between the projects. And I'm, that's about it. So thank you.